Upside down. Am I upside down to you guys? Am I upside down? I look like I'm upside down. Hey, how are you doing, Stacy? What's going on? Hello, Vanessa. What's happening? I have no idea. No, I'm not upside down. I'm only upside down to myself. Well, you know what? That's all that matters as long as I'm not upside down to you guys. That is the wildest thing. I don't know what's going on. I am upside down to me. Hey there, Brooklyn in the house. What's going on? Wow, look at the sky. So you can see the sky and you can see myself. Wow, that is, you know what? The devil's a liar. I don't know what's going on. I am annoyed that I'm upside down. I can't see. Yep, so okay, so Stacy. so I am right side up. You are telling me that you can see me and you can see the sky. Is that what you're saying? Hey, Reverend Morris. Hello, Victoria. What's going on? So is, is, that, is that what you're saying? You're saying yes. And you can see me clearly. You can see my head. You can see everything that's going on. That's the wildest thing on the face of the planet. Okay, hold on. <laughs> jar, jar, what's going on? All right. Perfectly clear, no less. Very interesting. Okay. Very, 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 very interesting. 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 <laughs> oh my goodness, guys. Okay. Can you still see me? What's happening? Because now I feel like um, I've just messed up everything. Did I mess everything up, Stacy? Did I mess everything up or did I not mess everything up? Okay. So I have no idea. But listen, now you're sideways. <laughs> you know what this is like? This is like, stop trying to hide. This, are you serious? I'm sideways, Stacy. Are you serious? You know what this is like? This is like when you were in high school um, and you tried to like, you try to make sure your hair was just right. Yes, I am sideways. That is hilarious. That is absolutely hilarious. Okay, so how is this? This is what? This is that. Am I still sideways? There you are. Says that we're good. Stacy says no. Okay. Oh my goodness. Stacy says perfect. All right. Okay, that is the craziest thing. I don't know what to say. Okay, let's push it back a little bit. Push it back a little bit. All right, okay. So, well, let's start. Now you lost the connection. Panora All right, well, I'm so sorry. Who do we have lost the, the, the connection? I am so sorry, Reverend Morris. Panoramic view, yes, I'm on vacation, guys. As you know, I'm on vacation. And I am still checking in. Lost connection. But I, but you guys are popping in. So um, no lost connection on my side. Reverend Trisha rejoined. Okay, good, good. Lady Triana. Hello, Re Lady Triana. How are you? Wonderful. Okay, so I'm no longer sideways to you guys. I'm no longer upside down to myself. Uh, looks like we are doing good. We are cooking with Crisco. Okay, for all you old heads out there. Great. We got some love. That means everything is going well. Hello, Mrs. Francis. What's going on? So, listen, I'm on vacation, ready to go. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so I'm ready to go as well, particularly since I'm on vacation. Hello, 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 Denise. Wonderful to see you. So, listen, as you guys know, we are in the uh, second day, part two of our uh, series for this week, The Real Scandal in the Real Empire. And so we are dealing with uh, this whole idea. You guys know that I am a scandal. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, I, I, am, I, I, am, I love me some scandal. I love me some uh, Olivia Pope. Like I said, she's the fixer. We know Jesus is the fixer, but but she's the fixer. Amen. Uh, and we know that Empire tomorrow is the season premiere. You two, you love you some scandal and Empire. Which one is your favorite? Okay, real quick as you guys move on. Whose favorite? Empire or Scandal? Which one? Your favorite. 
Uh, Scandal used to be my favorite, but I think Empire now has surpassed that. Um, at H. Collins 12, Hillary. Oh, wow. Wonderful. Hey, Hillary. What's going on? Empire. One Empire. Uh, one scandal, two empires. Okay, so right now it's two to one. Uh, yes, and empire. Wonderful. Okay, so now we're tied. Bishop Luda likes empire. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, empire. So it looks like empire is edging out scandal. Okay. Oh, now we got another scandal. Wow. So we're neck in neck, neck in neck. But like I said, um, we are dealing with scandalous things that occurred in uh, the ancient, ancient Palestinian times, things that were considered scandalous uh, in that particular cultural setting. Because as we know, culture changes throughout history. Culture changes throughout history. And so what is scandalous back then is not scandalous back right now. The have, Oh, I don't watch the haves and the have nots. I believe Reverend Morris watches the haves and the have nots. I don't watch that one. Uh, and so uh, if we're going to do a review, we're going to just do a quick review from yesterday, what we talked about. So you guys know the review. Uh, know the, 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 what we do, uh, swipe from the left to the right if you are wishing to share on an iPhone, uh, top to bottom for Android device. And we are going to get moving. Hearts over in the lower right hand corner means something is resonating with you. Thank you so much, Stacey. I appreciate you sharing and inviting other individuals. Appreciate you guys so, so very much. So yesterday, uh, yesterday, real quick, we talked about the first scandalous thing and that that was the fact that Jesus was born of a single mother. And that was really scandalous because we said that that uh, uh, Joseph could have re very well gone to the elders and he could have told the elders that Mary was with child. But we said that Joseph had it in his heart to not put Mary away. Joseph had it in his heart to put her away privately, quietly, in other words. So not publicly, because normally uh, in those days, those things were done publicly. Stonings were done publicly. Uh, when there was some sort of scandal that occurred, the person was brought before the entire community and the person was uh, uh, stoned or brought before a public court so that a public trial could take place. And, and the village elders were the ones who would who would exact the charges against the individual and who would who would ha, uh, uh, do the actual stoning of the person. So Joseph literally saved Mary's life so that she could bear the child that would become our savior. And what we also said was that that the spirit of the Lord was with Joseph because it showed that they were equally yoked. And, and, it, and it brought to mind, or rather, I was reminded, I should say, I had a conversation. Many of you know um, Deacon Grant, Deacon uh, George Grant from the Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. Uh, you know that he is a, a licensed clinical social worker and therapist, and he specializes in uh, marriages and family relationships, particularly in communities of color. And the thing that boggled my mind when he said to me, he was talking about how oftentimes individuals who are married, uh, the, the person, one of the individuals might really be into his or her work. And the other individual might think that that person is not interested, might think that that person is having an affair uh, because they don't understand the calling that is on the life of of the other individual. And so it made me think about Joseph, how, how, how Joseph, when the Holy Spirit came to Joseph, when the Holy Spirit spoke to Joseph and said, take her to be your wife, Joseph had to understand that there was a calling on the life of Mary. Now that was further scandalous because remember the calling in those days was not on the woman, but the calling was always on the brother. But, but, but this was revolutionary. The fact that one, we've got a single mother and two, now we've got a man who's man enough to realize that the woman that he's with has got a calling 
on her life. And because she's got a calling on her life, he needs to step up and do the right thing. Come on, somebody. This is what we're talking about when we're talking about being equally yoked with somebody. If you've got a calling on your life, you've got to be with someone who understands that there is a calling on your life and that it takes nothing from him or from her, but all the glory goes to God. And that's unfortunately why so many marriages do not work out, particularly sadly enough, even in the household of faith, because people are jealous and they don't realize that they're being jealous of God. They're being jealous of the calling of God, but we cannot be jealous of the calling of God in the lives of those who we are placed with. Come on, somebody. And so, so I want to just cap, recap that with you for yesterday, because when he spoke into my life, amen, when Deacon Grant mentioned that to me and, and some of the work that he does with, with families and couples and, 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 and those in the household of faith and communities of color, it just really struck me like, wow, Joseph knew that Mary had a call on her life and he was the man. He was the one that said, you know what? This is going to be my wife. She was pledged to me and I'm going to take her. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what kind of scandal this is supposed to be in this time and day and age, but I'm going to do what God has called me to do and I'm going to love on this woman and take her and raise this child. So I, I just I just thank God for that. I thank God for, for Deacon Grant pouring that into my spirit. And I want to share that with you guys. But today, today we're dealing with part two real briefly because I got to get to my vacation, y'all. Today we're dealing with part two. And that's how Jesus dealt with women overall. Not just the fact that he was born of a single woman, but how he dealt with women. And particularly what came to mind was the woman with the issue of blood. We know the story is found in uh, the Gospel of Luke, the 8th chapter, verse 43. It starts off, there was a certain woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. Certain uh, scriptures or certain translations say that she had been hemorrhaging for 12 years. We know that the scripture moves on to tell us how she went and touched the hem of his garment after she had pressed her way through the crowd. She was healed. The, the, the disciples are like, yo, what are you talking about? After Jesus says, someone touched me, the disciples' minds are boggled because they are saying that, that he, that how could anyone, uh, how could you know who touched you with all of these people? And Jesus being God in the flesh said, I know somebody has touched me. He noticed the woman, the woman came trembling and she said what had been done. And he said, daughter, your faith has made you heal. Go in peace. Come on, somebody. I thought about that because the fact that Jesus, who was a rabbi, who was a teacher, a Jewish rabbi, a Jewish teacher, he was a holy man. Holy men, and Jewish men in general, really, did not speak to women who were not their wives or immediate family members. But now here it is, Jesus, the rabbi, the teacher, he realizes, finds out that this woman has touched him and he does not back away. He does not say unclean because what he could have done was he could have held up unclean. Remember, this woman was hemorrhaging. This woman was bleeding. And the very fact that she was bleeding means that she was unclean in that day and in that age. And so women, remember, women could not even sit next to men in the synagogues. Women had to sit in the upper outer court. Not even the upper end. They were in the upper outer court. That's the kind of uh, a, a social situation that we're talking about in that culture. But here we have Jesus who has been touched by a woman who was considered unclean in that day and age. And not only does Jesus show compassion, but he says, go thy faith. He ministers to her. He ministers to her and says, your faith has made you whole. He calls her daughter. He gives her a sign of affection. He speaks to her with an affectionate tone and says, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. And my sisters and brothers, that was so scandalous in that empire. I want to encourage you on today, yes, to remember that, that regardless of the scandalous nature, remember she had been bleeding for 10, 12 years. She had been hemorrhaging. And there are some things in your own lives that you have been hemorrhaging. 
come on. You might not be physically bleeding, but, but there are situations that you've been hemorrhaging. There are circumstances that you've been hemorrhaging and you have been holding on to them for a long, long time. And it has been preventing you from moving out into what God has called you to move out into. Your hemorrhaging has prevented you from doing the things that God has called you to do. Remember, because this woman was unclean, she could not go about her day-to-day -day business. She could not go to the synagogue. She could not uh, commune with other individuals. She could not go even to the market at the regular time of day because she was unclean. But one day she was fed up. One day she was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And she says, I don't care who says I'm unclean. I don't care who says I'm dirty. I don't care who says I'm unfit to be around other people, but I'm going to press my way through a crowd of people to get to the man who I heard is able to heal me. I spent my money on everybody else. I spent my money on all the doctors. I have nothing left but to go through this crowd that might push me back because of who I am and get a healing. Scandalous, y'all, because there might be somebody in that crowd that says, I know that woman. She's unclean. There might be someone that says, I know her because she's dirty. I know her because she's been hemorrhaging. I know her because she spent all her money on doctors and she's still not healed, but she took a chance. Is there anybody that is willing to take a chance because they know that God is able to do what other people cannot do. That's a great thing, my sisters and brothers, to realize, amen, that you can step out on faith and do some things, even though they might appear scandalous to those who are around you. And so, as we prepare for this week, and I'm being real, Empire and Scandal, all right? I got my TV set. I've got my, 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 cat, my calendar is ready. But when I think about the real scandal, how God saved me, how God protected me, how God covered me, and you guys know that he's done the very, very, very same thing for you. I want to bless God today for the scandalous things that he continues to do in our lives. God bless you. You are welcome so much, Vanessa. So good to see you. I'm so glad that you were able to tune in today. P. Mayor, I see people coming in. P. Maynor, I'm very sorry if I mispronounce your name, but God bless you guys. If you are just tuning in, make sure you catch the replay. Make sure you catch the replay, and you can also share the replay now because Periscope has new additions and improvements. Forever grateful. You guys, are awesome. Listen, I'm going to be back tomorrow, 1.15. If I'm a little bit late, guys, hang in there with me. I'm definitely going to be on. God bless you, my sister. I will see you guys tomorrow and continue. That's P. Maynard. Continue. Amen, Sister Francis. Operating in God's power and in God's purpose. Love you madly. Take care.